victims hoped they'd finally get justice. They wanted him tried for the murders of 19-year-old Grace O'Malley Kumar, her friend and fellow student, 19-year-old Barnaby Weber, and 65-year-old Ian Coates, the caretaker of a Nottingham primary school. Kalakani, who also uses the name Adam Mendes, has denied murder, but has admitted three counts of manslaughter on the basis of diminished responsibility. Today, the prosecution accepted the manslaughter pleas. Most people were still asleep on the morning of the 13th of June when Valdo Calacani singled out his three random victims. The court heard how Grace and Barnaby had been walking home along Ilkeston Road after a night out. At 4am, 200 yards from their student flats, Calacani attacked Barnaby, repeatedly stabbing him. The court heard how Grace tried to protect her friend by pushing Calacani away. When he turned on her, she fought back, despite being repeatedly stabbed. As the harrowing details were read out, the mothers of both the students began to sob. Less than an hour later, Calacani phoned his brother, saying, This will be the last time I speak to you. Take the family out of the country. His brother asked him if he was going to do anything stupid. Calacani replied, It's already done. At around 5 a.m. and two miles from the first attack, Kalakani tried to get into a homeless hostel through a window. He was punched in the face by the occupant and eventually left. The prosecution said he's admitted trying to gain access to kill someone. A few minutes later and just round the corner, Kalakani killed his third victim. Ian Coates had stopped his van. The court heard how Kalakani attacked him as he sat in the vehicle, continuing to stab him after he pulled him onto the pavement. Mr Coates had been on his way to work at a nearby primary school. He was due to retire in five months' time. The court heard Kalakani then drove the stolen van to the city centre. Once there, he deliberately drove into one pedestrian, then two others. He's pleaded guilty to the attempted murder of all three. Kalakani was arrested at 5.35. Police say they had to use a taser because he was armed with a knife. Valdo Kalakani had been diagnosed as suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. The court heard that he'd been sectioned four times and on one occasion had been arrested for assaulting a police officer. He'd also been given antipsychotic medication but often didn't take it. Last June, in front of thousands, Barnaby's mother spoke of her feelings about the man who'd killed her son. The monstrous individual will not define us. This evil person is just that. He is just a person. Today in court, Emma Webber got the chance to tell Kalakani in person. You coward, she said, adding, I see through you. Earlier, Grace's father and younger brother spoke to me about their feelings. How frustrating is it for you that you won't see a murder trial? Um, it is enormously frustrating, but at the same time, I've got to say that we do have faith in, in the legal system and in the judiciary. Um, as long as we get the outcome and as long as the public are safe. What do you mean the outcome? Um, people like himself cannot be roaming the streets. They shouldn't be there uh, so that something horrendous like this can be repeated. And I, don't, I, I think, you know, I think if a person like him deserves to be put away and, and not have any touch with society. I think there's no two ways about it. He's a dangerous man. He's more than dangerous, to put it politely. Um, and to have him roaming around and doing, continuing with his actions is simply not acceptable. Looking back to that dreadful morning on the 13th of June, we're told that Grace tried to protect her friend Barnaby. Did that surprise you that she, she did something like that? Not one bit. Not, not at all. Um, that's who she was. She would never leave her friend alone. Put others before herself. Completely. That's exactly who she was. And, you know, we kick ourselves to this day about why did she have to do that? But that was just who she was. Are there lessons for others to learn from this? Looking back, of course, I think um, 
I think more more could have been done, and I think um, I think I think it's it's you know if if this person had been put in front of the courts in front of a magistrate, and I think even if he'd had a one degree, you know, of variation in his trajectory, it's a bit like an oil tanker. If you change the rudder by one degree, you could end up in a different continent, and these things might not have happened. I think importantly though. Um, in terms of focusing on what could have stopped this from happening, I think it's important to also look at knife crime as a whole and as an epidemic, because I've said it many times, and it's easier to get access to a knife than it is to get access to alcohol, you know? Um, you can go into a kitchen and get a knife and leave the house, and it's as easy as that before you take someone's life. And sadly, on this occasion, three people's lives, and attempts at another three, and I think more needs to be done by the government to stop knife crime. What ultimately do you want the legacy of Grace to be? I want to make sure as her younger brother that she's never forgotten. She doesn't deserve to be. She'd done so much for the community and contributing to making the world a better place that she can't be forgotten. And as long as I'm here, I'll make sure that doesn't happen. And ultimately, that is why I've been working so hard on the foundation. And I want to make sure that she's always with us, even though she's not physically with us. I want her to live through us.